Hello everybody, welcome back to the online course on computer organization and architecture. We are in module input output subsystem and today we are in unit 4 and we are going to discuss about storage devices. Okay, as usual now let us see what are the objective for this particular unit. So, I have stated three different objective for this particular unit. Objective 1 identify the storage devices for secondary memory. So, we are going to just give idea about in knowledge level what are the different storage devices we have. Discuss the design issues of a hard disk, explaining read write mechanism, format of hard disk, addressing scheme and data format. So, this will be in the design level. So, we will see what are the design issues that we have for a hard disk. Objective 3 explain the need of hard disk controller. So, why need an why you need a hard disk controller? We are going to just give idea about it. So, it will be in the comprehension level. So, now why we require hard disks or storage devices? We know that computer works on von Neumann stored program principle and processor is going to work with the data available in the main memory. So, main memory is a semiconductor memory or semiconductor device. Again we know that it is volatile in nature. So, once we switch over machine information will simply go off from the memory. So, we need some permanent storage devices. Okay. Secondly, we know that in main memory we are having a limited capacity it may be either 2 GB or 4 GB in the current scenario earlier it was very less. So, in that particular memory you have to load operating system many more application software along with that or program and data. So, it is not sufficient. So, we need the secondary storage devices. So, one of the most common secondary storage devices is your hard disk. So, in this particular lecture we are going to briefly explain about the hard disk. So, if you look into the memory hierarchy. So, in this case we are going to say that in the inboard memory that means, maybe it is inside the processor or it may be in the motherboard because all indicated component of a processor or a computer will be put in a board and we say this is the motherboard. So, inboard memory we are having the registers we know these are the temporary working space inside the processor. Then next level we are having the cache memory we know that to increase the performance to increase the speed of the processor we used to put some high speed memory between processor and main memory. So, we said this is the cache memory and after that we are having main memory which is basically RAM random access memory it is a semiconductor memory and processor is going to work with the information available in the main memory. So, this is the memory that we are having in board then already I have mentioned that we are having a limited memory space or storage space inside the processor or in main memory. So, for that we need some the memory element which are permanent in nature we are going to store all the information on those particular devices and we say these are your outboard storage and from that particular storage in it we are going to keep we are going to first bring the information to the main memory. So, in that particular case one is your magnetic disk or the hard disk that we used to say most of you say that in your machine you are having a disk or hard disk of capacity say 500 GB or 1 terabyte like that. So, this is the magnetic disk and it is the working principle is on magnetism. We are having CD ROM also you know about compact disk this is your CD ROM read only memory. So, CD ROM basically it works on optical property. Similarly, again we are having CD it is again read write that means, you can write and you can read it also later on. So, sometimes you can store our information we can first write the information in the disk then from that particular disk we are going to retrieve it or we are going to read it. But in case of ROM CD ROM only uh, we are going to have the information in that particular ROM we can just retrieve it. So, like that we are having DVD DVD read write or DVD RAM like that. So, these are basically outboard storage or you can say some up to some extent you can say that this is these are online storage also because that processor is going to access those particular devices and while working with the processor, processor can take information from those particular devices also. 
like that when we are going to do some data processing my information may be in a file that file will reside in this particular hard disk and processor is going to take the information from hard disk and bring it to the memory. On the other hand you can say that many a time you used to see a movie and that movie is in your CD. So, we are having a video player or mp3 player. So, in that particular player it needs data to display or display the movie. So, it is going to take the information from those particular CD and process it and accordingly it will display in the monitor. So, that is why sometimes we say these are our online memory also online storage. So, one more memory we are saying about that offline storage these are basically used for backup purposes. So, one type is your magnetic tap or do you have any formatics we say warm write once read more. Okay. So, this is the way we can say. So, these are basically offline why we are saying this is offline we are going to keep information or so this is for keeping the backup of our data. So, whenever we are going to work with those backup copies processor may not directly access the data from those particular devices somehow you have to bring it to some online devices and from online devices processor is going to access this data. So, in our computer system this is the total memory hierarchy. Okay. So, in this particular hierarchy what will happen if you go then speed decreases. So, this is your low speed if you go from this top to the bottom of this pyramid. So, that registers is having the highest speed than cache memory and after that main memory like that we are having the speed. So, if you go from the tip of the pyramid to the bottom of the pyramid that speed decreases. So, this is the highest speed and here we are having the lowest speed. Secondly, if you look into the capacity then capacity increases when I go from this top to bottom. So, we are having we know that we are having very limited number of registers may be 8 or 16, but cache memory we may have in the tune of your megabyte. If you are going to talk about main memory it is in the gigabyte. So, like that in magnetic is now we are going to get around such terabyte capacity like that capacity is increasing in that particular case. Also, if you go from this tip to bottom then if you consider about cost that cost also decreases. Since, these are high speed more performance better. So, we have to pay more cost like that if I will go there then what will happen that cost gradually decreases and we are going to get a low cost memory devices in this particular case. So, if we are going for better performance then we have to pay more cost. So, this is the way we can look at it. So, this is the total memory hierarchy in a computer system and today we are going to discuss about the working principle of this particular magnetic ticks. So, these are the type of external memory that already I have mentioned said magnetic disks, magnetic disks we have RAID and removable. RAID stands for redundant array of independent disks. So, generally nowadays in most of the server and most of the computer system we use the RAID configuration it is a redundant basically we are keeping the information in a redundant way. So, that if something fails if one hard disk fails then we can retrieve it from the second hard disk. So, that is why we say this is a redundant array of independent disks. So, just we are making some redundancy on the data. So, that if if there is some problem with one particular disk then we can retrieve it from the other disks. Again it is talking about the removable that means, what will happen we can remove the disks from the system and we can put it somewhere else or we can take this particular disk to some other system. So, it will help us to port the data from one system to other system. So, they are magnetic in nature. So, other one is optical already I mentioned that CD compact disks these are basically optical in nature and you just see that in most of the cases these are removable in nature we just put the CD on a CD drive we work with it then we can take it out. So, it can be taken to some other. And another one is a magnetic tab this is basically offline devices which works on magnetic in nature and this is basically tap. So, now if you compare like that what will happen you can see about a magnetic disk and magnetic tab this tap is something related to your audio tap or say video tap. So, here if we are going to access the information then what will happen since it is a continuous tap then what will happen. 
So, if I want to retrieve the information that is stored in this particular portion, we have to skip those particular position and we can come to this particular point. But in case of your magnetic disks, it is random in nature like your record player. We can put the head in a particular track and we can start playing the song from that particular track. So, this is like that random in nature randomly you can go to a particular position and you can start reading information from that particular point. Now, what is the basic things about magnetic disks? Just I am mentioning over here, it is we are having a disk substrate coated with magnetic material. So, basically in most of the cases you will find that this is some sort of your circular plate and the surface of this plate will be coated with magnetizable material, magnetizable material or say magnetic material. So, that we can magnetize it in some polarity and initially that substrate that the material used for preparing the substrate was uh, aluminum, but nowadays we are using glass. So, when we are using glass basically this improve the uniformity of the surface. So, increase the reliability. So, it is reduce the read write errors because now it is going to reduce the defect it is better stiffness and it has better shock and damage resistance. So, nowadays most of the substrate or most of the circular plate that we are going to use is glass and the glass will be coated with magnetic material. So, that it can be magnetized in some polarity and we are going to store our information as a magnetic property in the disk. So, that is why I say it is a magnetic disk or in hard disk is basically magnetic in nature. So, here we should have two operations basically one is your read and another one is write. So, in case of read we are going to retrieve the information from disk and going to bring it to the processor inside the computer while we are bringing it to the computer means we are going to put it into memory. Second is your write operation in case of write operation whatever data processing we are doing in our computer that is residing in our main memory because it works on von Neumann stored program principle and from main memory you are going to store it in our hard disk. So, this is the right mechanism. So, when we are storing it in the hard disk then it becomes permanent. Okay. So, if we now modify it then only contents will get changed, but when it is in the main memory this is not permanent it is volatile in nature. I think you have experienced many a time say you are doing some work in the computer suddenly something happens to the computer may be there is a power failure then system is going to shut down immediately it will switch off. When we switch on it then what will happen? Some of the recent information may not be available because we have not stored it in a permanent devices. So, whatever we have stored in a permanent devices till that point we can retrieve it. Some of the recent modification cannot be retrieved because it was in the main memory and it has gone up as soon as we have switch off the machine or power goes off. So, that is why we need these two mechanism one is your read and write. So, what read is doing recording and retrieving via conductive coil called head. So, we are using a read write head and through this particular head we are going to either read the information or write the information. We will see how we are going to do it, but it is basically magnetic in nature we are storing information as a magnetic polarity. Maybe single read write head or separate ones. So, it depends on how we are going to construct a, going to construct it we may have one read write head or we may have several read write head. During read write head is stationary platter rotates, we will discuss it how why it is required and how we are going to access it. So, in case of write what will happen? We are going to pass the current through the coil which produces a magnetic field and that magnetic field we are going to capture in the magnetic material that we are having in that particular plate or particular disk. Okay, or particular surface. Pulses sent to the head, we are going to send some current pulses to the head and it is going to create a magnetic field and that magnetic field is going to be recorded in the surfaces, magnetic surfaces. Magnetic pattern recorded on the surface below. So, this is the right mechanism. In case of read mechanism, magnetic field moving relative to the coil and it produces current and by looking into the direction of current we are going to change it and we are going to say that we are retrieving some information. 
on the other hand, the same coil may be used for both read and write, or we may use to define mechanism for read and write. So, in that particular case, so you just see that we are having a surface plate where we are going to coat it with magnetic material and we are going to store information as a magnetic polarity. And to this to store information or retrieve information, we need a mechanism and we say this is the read write head. Okay, now, the read write head will look something like that. So, this is basically you can see that we are having a mechanism like that some iron or coil iron substrate uh, inductive bright element. So, here we are going to have a coil we are going to put a coil. So, it is very much similar to I can tell you some sort of your DC motor electrical motors or electrical generators. So, here we are having a soft and we are having a coil. So, this is basically soft and this is coil. Now, what will happen if we are going to pass current through this particular coil then current will move in that particular direction. So, due to that due to this flow of current it is going to generate an magnetic field. So, depending on the direction of the current that is having a particular polarity as I just said that this is the polarity and or not pole or not polarity. Now, once we change the direction of the current say now I am going to give the current for the different direction. Again this substrate is going to produce a magnetic field, but this time the polarity of the field will be defined. So, it will be the south polarity. Okay. Now, simply changing the direction of the current we are changing the polarity of the magnetism and whatever magnetic field it is gener uh, producing that will be stored in this particular magnetic material. So, now we have to just simply change the direction. Now, what will happen? We are having two kind of information one is 0 and second is 1 or may be in case of 0 it is low voltage and in case of 1 it is high voltage. So, depending on the information we are going to give the direction of the current say for 0 if I am having this particular direction then for 1 the current will move in the opposite direction. So, whatever information we have in memory depending on that we are going to produce the appropriate current in for appropriate direction and depending on the direction of the current what will happen it is going to produce magnetism and that magnetism will be stored in this particular magnetic material. Okay. Now, once we store one bit of information then this particular flutter will rotate. So, it will move. So, if I am storing one bit of information over here then second bit will be stored in the next position third bit will be stored in the next to it like that it will move we are going to rotate the disks. So, depending on the rotation of the disks we are going to store the information in this particular position. So, this is the way we are going to write information. So, now read what will happen basically in read. So, basically you just see when we are writing it now it is we are giving the current. So, it is going to work as a some sort of electrical motor it will generate the magnetic field and depending on the magnetic field our shaft rotates in a motor. So, it is some sort of the principle that we are using in a motor, but what is the right mechanism in case of right mechanism what will happen we are going to move this particular magnetic surface. So, when we move the magnetic surface then what will happen it is going to generate current on this particular coil that we are having the shaft. So, the principle is similar to your current generator. So, when we are moving it depending on the polarity of the magnetism it is going to generate current. So, in for say one particular polarity not polarity if current produces say in this direction for the south polarity current will be produced in the other direction. So, in case of one polarity it will generate in this particular direction, but for second one current will be generated in the other direction. So, now by depending on the direction of the current we are going to interpret it is either 0 or 1. Basically, we are storing two kind of information one is 0 and 1. So, when we are going to store it 
in the magnetic material for one case say for zero we are going to store it as a north pole for one we are going to store it as a south pole. So, while we are retrieving it. So, in that particular case for north polarity it is going to give me current in one direction we are going to interpret as 0 and for south pole we are going to interpret as 1. So, this is the right read write mechanism of our hard disk and we say this is the read write head. On the other hand in some cases we are going to use say it can be used as a write head and read head may be different one. So, this is some magnetic resonance sensor basically. So, magnetic resonator can be used for retrieve the polarities of this particular magnetic surface and depending on that we are going to have current in different directions. So, either we can use one particular head for both read and read purposes, but we can use two different mechanism also. So, this is the basic principle how we are storing in our magnetic surface. Now, we have to know what information we have stored, where we have stored. So, we are going to see those particular issues also. Now, how we are going to organize the data, data organization and formatting. Now, what happens? We are saying that basically we are going to have a circular disk. So, we are going to make concentric ring and on those particular ring we are going to store our information and we are having a gap between two ring just to remove the interference. So, this may be gap we are not storing it. So, we may reduce this particular gap to increase the capacity. Again, we are having a limited capacity. So, we are going to store a particular number of bits in a particular track okay. and this will move in a constant angular velocity. So, we have to rotate it in a constant angular velocity. So, why you have to rotate it when we are going to read it, when we are going to write it then first bit we are going to write it over here, second bit we are going to write in the next position like that. So, we have to rotate it. Secondly, when we are going to read it, we have to move this particular magnetic surface to generate current. So, whatever is there between the head, it is going to sense this particular polarity and depending on that we are going to have some current and we are going to work with that current. So, this is the way we are going to store it. Again, it says that tracks, we are having some tracks and those tracks will be divided into some sector. Maybe we can put divide and you can say this is a sector in that particular dx. So, minimal block size is your one sector will come to distance. So, whatever information we can store in a particular sector is known as your block. Okay. If I say that block size is your say 512 bytes, then what will happen? In this particular block, I can store 512 bytes of information. That means, 512 into 8 bits, 1 byte is equal to 8 bits. So, that many bits can to be stored in a particular sector and this is the minimum block size in one sector and this is having some importance in subsequent slide I am going to show it what is the importance basically why you should know what is the block size or how many information you can store in a particular sector. May have more than one sector per track of course. Now, this is the whatever I have discussed, whatever I have explained in the last list, this is the diagram, neat diagram that we are having. So, these are basically inter track gap, these are the inter track sector gap, and these are the different track, and tracks are divided into different sectors. So, this is your sector 1, sector 2, sector 3, like that, we are having several sectors, and total n sector. So, it is going up to S n this is a track 1, then this will be track 2. So, we are having several tracks. So, this is the organization of our disk and data is organized in this particular way. So, data will be stored in this particular sector. So, now to have these things what will happen? Increase the spacing between bit in different tracks. I think now you understand what will happen say I am saying that it is the same block size. So, I am having 512 bytes. That means, in this particular position, I am storing 512 bytes because this is a sector. So, similarly, this is another sector. In the next track, we are storing 512 bytes. Like that, if I am going for the next sec track, then what will happen? Now, 
I am going to have store 512 by 3 hours. So, now you just see the area circumference that we are having in this sector is less than the circumference area of this particular track. So, when we are moving out from the center, then what will happen? The sector size is more and we are coming near to the center, then sector size is less, but we are storing the same amount of information in a particular sector. So, you can say that bit density is low in the outer track and bit density is more in inner track. That means, in a small sector we are storing more information. So, bad bit density is more here, but in the outer track bit density is less. So, this is one. Secondly, disk rotate in a constant angular velocity. Now, you just see since it is rotating a constant angular velocity. So, the time required to cover this particular length will be equal to time required to traverse this particular length, because it is rotating in a constant angular velocity. So, this angular velocity is constant same. So, this since it is angular velocity same. So, this cone will be traversed in a constant time. So, that means, this information will be retrieved in lesser time and that information also retrieved in the same time, okay. but here we are traversing more amount of time. So, it is traversed in a constant angular velocity. So, time required to retrieve the information from a particular sector is same, whether it is an inner track or outer track. Okay. So, it works on constant angular velocity. So, give pi shape sector and concentric track, you can see it individual track and sector addressable. Now, you see why you say that individual tracks and addressable sectorable move head to give track and wait for a given sector, then waste of space in outer track, because already I have mentioned that it is having a lesser bit density. So, we are wasting some space at the time. So, for that to reduce it to reduce the wastage, we can use the concept of zones. That means, tracks will be divided into defi defined zones and we are coming to the zoning concept then packing density or bit density is same in all the tracks. So, we are storing less number of information in inner track and more number of information in the outer track. So, that density bit density will remain same, but here the control circuitry will be a complex one. Now, you just see that here what will happen? We are having concentrating rig and we are dividing into different sectors. So, we can access the information from those particular sectors. But here what will happen? We are creating zone, the length of those zones are your same. Okay. That means, we are storing some information and we are keeping same number of space to store the information. So, like that here also we are having this thing. So, you just see that if I am storing 512 byte over here, then same 512 byte will store here also in one zone. So, in same area we are storing the same information. So, bit density is same and in that particular case you just see that in the inner track we are having less number zone, in outer track we are having a more number of zone. That means, in outer track we are storing more information, but when we are having a concentrated ring we are storing same information in all the tracks, same amount of information in all the tracks. So, that is why bit density is more in inner track and bit density is less in the outer track. So, this is one advantage we are getting. Now, we can store more information, but to store information and retrieve information, the circuitry that we are going to design will be a more complex one. But for this particular organization, we are going to get a simple circuit, because again that designing and implementing a complex circuit is going to cost more. So, this is the trade off where we are going to have in most of the cases, we are going to use this one only. Now, what is the characteristics of this particular disk? Now, here we have mentioned one thing that individual track and sectors are addressable. This is one important point. Why you are saying? You just see that I know the track number and I know the sector number. Okay. Then, 
I can go to a particular track and in that particular track we can go to a particular sector. So, this is basically we can say what is the track number and what is the sector number, but straight away I cannot go to this position because this is some position where we are storing one particular bit. We can go to it provided again we can have this is addressable. So, in that particular case to make it simple what will happen we give the we are going to identify those particular track and sector junction and we can go to a particular sector. After coming to this particular sector what will happen sequentially we have to access this information whether it is read information or write it. What is it is a read operation or write operation. So, I am going to work with this particular entire information. So, this is basically known as my block of the disks. So, we are going to work with the block of a disk. Straight away I cannot identify this particular position and I go to that point. I can very well come to the start of this particular sector and from that I am going to access the information. So, it is basically a block access mechanism we are going to access block wise not an individual bit wise or byte wise. Now, what are the characteristics? It says that fixed or removable head, movable head, removable uh, disks or fixed disks, single or double sided disks, single and multiple plate head mechanism we are having said different way of having the head mechanism one is contact fixed sketch and flying. I think nowadays I doubt whether you have seen floppy disks or not, but earlier days this is also kind of your storage devices which is your basically removable disks. You can just put into a CD a floppy drive, write it and take it back. Nowadays that you are using CD drive. So, this is magnetic in nature. So, these are defined head mechanism it is a contact fixed gap and flying. We will just log about the fixed. So, what are those characteristics? One is saying that fixed and movable head. Now, in that particular case now say I am having concentric track ok now I have to read information from those particular track. So, in case of fixed head what will happen I am having separate head for each and every track ok this is talk about the fixed head. So, for each and every track we are going to keep one head and that head is responsible to read information or write information from that particular track. But in case of movable head what will happen that we are having one particular head ok that head will move outward and inward. So, if it is moving inward then we are coming to the innermost track and when I move outward then it is coming to the outermost track. So, this is the movable head. So, that means, we are having only one read write head and that read write head is responsible to read and write operation or doing the read and write operation in each and every track. So, it will move from track to track, but in case of fixed head for every track we are having a separate read write head. Removable or not this is basically a Higgs disk property. So, in case of your removable disk what will happen? We are having a disk drive, we can put one disk you can work with that particular disk or you can remove it place another one. So, like that your record player we are going to place defined record like that, but in case of your fix your distance if it is not removable then what will happen it is will be permanently mounted. Now, it has say whatever laptop you are using or whatever desktop you are using this disk is basically not removable. So, it will remain in that particular drive and we are going to work with this disk, but in case of removable one what will happen? We drive will be there, we can remove the disks that storing surfaces and you can put a new disk over here, but do not confuse with your portable hard disk. Portable hard disk is slightly different, it is whole drive will be portable, whole drive will be detached, but in case of removable one drive will be there, but only disks we are removing it. So, multiple platter, so basically we are talking about one particular surface we are going to store it. So, what will happen? we can have a pile of platters and going to have one drive. So, that means, we are having multiple platters and we are going to store our information in multiple surfaces. So, this is basically the complete scenario. So, the way we are showing this is the read write head. So, in that particular case this arrangement is that we are having it is your not fixed, but movable 
So, this head will move inward to outward to go to a particular track. Okay. So, for one head is used to read and write for a particular track. Now, these are the several platters. Okay. So, we are having several surfaces to store our information. Generally, those platters also you can use either both the side or one side. In most of the cases, it is both the side, but top surface and bottom surface platters basically we are using one surfaces for safety reason top is not used and here the bottom one will not be used, but intermediate platters will be used in both the side there. So, for every side we are having one read write head, but for one particular side uh, or one particular surface we are having only one head. So, this is movable it moves up and down and this is the spindle. So, the spindle will help to rotate the disc. So, if I want to read the information from that particular point then what will happen first it will rotate it and bring it to the bottom of this particular read write head then we are going to do operation over here if it is a read operation we are going to retrieve it if it is a write operation we are going to write a new information over there. So, this is the some scenario about the hard disk. So, in that particular case I am talking about the fix and removable. So, in case of fix those platters will remain fixed, it will come inside a cabinet and we are going to work with it. In case of movable what will happen this disk pack can be removed and you can put another new disk pack over here to work with. Now, when we are talking about the tracks now there is a concept called cylinder also. Now, what will happen we are having concentric track and we are having several surfaces. If we are going to consider a particular track then what will happen all the track of that particular position is going to form a cylinder just see that if I am going to consider about this particular track. Okay. This particular track okay. I am taking the same track of all the surfaces. So, you can consider this as a cylinder. So, like that if I am coming for that outer track then those outer tracks are forming a cylinder. So, this is basically nothing but the collection of tracks of the same position of all the disks and we are going to treat these things as a cylinder. Now, how to finding a sector? I am saying that when I am going to store information in a disk then what will happen? It is divided into several sector and we are going to work with this particular sector. So, somehow we have to identify this particular sector then only we can work with this thing. So, main emphasis is to finding the sector and already we have finding the starting of the sector then what will happen I have to access all the information of this particular sector. Okay. So, in that particular case now we are having that block transfer and we are going to transfer the entire information of this particular block. If it is a read operation I am going to take the information of the entire block and going to bring it to the disk and when it is a write operation I am going to take it from the computer and going to put it this thing. Now, generally we are having some idea about the file we said that we are storing some file in hard disk and we generally access those particular file. Now, to indicate the completion of the file end of the file there is a call end of file marker. Now, when we are storing it say I am starting from this particular point and storing our information of the file you just say that it is taking complete two sector and say somewhere it finishes. So, this is the end of the file marker and I have stored it. Now, in that particular case when I am going to store another file I cannot start from this particular point because I cannot address that particular point. So, maybe next file I am going to store start from this particular sector. So, in this particular portion we are not storing any information. So, these are some sort of intermediate wastage that we are having. So, this is we have to sacrifice because we cannot identify this thing. We may have mechanism, but why unnecessary complicated design we should do. So, to make it simpler we are going to do this thing. So, our emphasis is now I have to identify this particular position then only I can work with read write operation. Now, for that we have to give the address. Now, what is the addressing format? You just see that we are having the format like that it is talking about that sector number, surface number and track number. So, this is the format say now what will happen say I am having several surfaces say maybe this is the 
first surface, bottom one is second, top one is third, fourth, fifth and say this is the sixth surface. So, I can think these are the six surfaces, top and bottom we are not storing it because these will be exposed. So, say these are the six surfaces. Now, where I am having my data, say if it is having in some position over here, then I have to first get the surface number in which surface we are having it. Then once I get the surface number, then in that particular surface I have to say in which sector we are storing it and we must know in which track we have stored it because we have several track. So, now you just see that if I know the sector number, surface number and track number, then we can go to that particular point. So, this is the addressing format of this particular disk. Then after that, after coming to that particular starting position, then it is basically block transfer. I am going to transfer the entire block. So, because you can provide the address of a block. So, this is transfer is your block and what is the capacity of the disk? So, it depends on the block size. I am saying that if the block size is B, then we have to say how many sectors we are having in a track, say block size is B, say they are having N sector in a track. So, I am going to store B into N and if I am having M track, then same amount I am going to store in those particular M track and if I am having say P surfaces, then same amount will be stored in each and every surfaces. So, this will be the total capacity of my disk. So, here what will happen? I am storing in a sector form, but if we are going to use the concept of zone, then capacity will increase because in this particular case, packing density is more over here, but we are storing very less information into the outer ring. Okay. So, this is the way we can calculate what is the capacity of a hard disk. Now, you said that now you are having a hard disk of say 512 MB. Sorry, this is too less nowadays. You can say that you are having either 500 GB disk or you can say that 1 TB, 1 terabyte disk. Basically, I think most of you are nowadays processing that portable disk and the capacity of portable disk is like that 500 GB or 1 terabyte like that. So, by looking into it, now we can find out or we can see that it is basically organized in this particular way, how many surfaces we have, how many sectors it is divided, how many tracks we have and secondly, what is the block size, how many bits we are going to store in a particular sector. So, by looking into these things, we can find out the total capacity of the disk. Now, here we are saying that one I am saying that what is the addressing format? This is your sector number, surface number and track number. So, in that particular case what will happen? First, we are identifying the sector say, we are going to work with this particular sector. Then we are going to look for the surface, in which surface we are then I am giving the track number. Okay. So, this is the way that I am going to say, say this is my address. Now, the simple things I am going to say, this is the sector number of surface, sector, surface and say track. Just so say that this is I am storing 4 bit, in surface I am storing 3 bit and say here I am showing 8 bit of information. So, what is the total size of the address? 8 plus 4 12 15. So, total 15 bit address. Now, say this is sector. So, I can use any 4 bits over here say 0 0 0 0 surface is your say 0 0 0 track is also say 0 0 0. So, this is the address that means we are coming to the 0 8 sector of 0 8 surface and 0 8 track. So, we are going to start it from here. Now, after that you just say the after coming completing this particular sector, then what will happen? This sector number will move from 0, 0, 0, 1. So, that means we are going to the next sector. So, like that we will complete this particular track. Once we complete this particular track, then what will happen? Now, surface number changes. Now, from 0, 0, 0 it will become 0, 0, 1. That means we are changing the surface. Now, like that if I am going to all the track of all the surfaces, then what will happen? So, it will go from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, then it will going to sense the track from 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 1. That means, 
Now, it will from this particular track it is moving to this point. So, this is one issue. Now, in this particular case what will happen? First we are going one particular track. Now, after completion of this particular track if I complete all the sectors then we are going to change the track number that means, we will going to outer track. So, like that I am going to complete all the tracks of this particular surface one we complete all the tracks then we are sending the surface number then from this surface we will go to the next surface. Now, this is the two way different way I can give my format whatever you like you can use it, but you have to see the effect in performance which one is going to give a better performance you have to see. Now, how we can measure the performance once we know the access time the time required to access the information from digs. Okay. So, in that particular case we are having some component over here to measure the performance basically look into the speed of the data transfer. So, one is talking about the seek time what is the seek time it says that moving the head to correct track. So, now what will happen? I am having those particular track. Now, here I am having the read write head, it can go from the outer track to the inner track. So, now what will happen when I given particular address, so address is coming in this particular form sector number, surface number, track number, then we know from which track we need to get the information. So, that read write will have to place into the appropriate track, that means either it will move inward or we have to move outward to place it in the appropriate track. So, this time required to put the head in the appropriate track is known as your seek time, because once I am going to read a file that means, I have to provide the starting address of that particular file that means, what I have to give track number, sector number and surface number. So, once I know the track number then what will happen I have to place the read write head into the appropriate track. So, this time required to move this head to the appropriate track is known as your seek time. Okay. Now, once I identify this particular track, then what will happen? Now, I have placed the read write head here, but my information may start from say this particular sector. Okay. Now, what will happen? Now, I have to bring this particular appropriate sector beneath this particular read write head. So, it will take some time. So, this time is known as your rotational delay or rotational latency or latency time. So, that means, to bring the appropriate uh, to bring the head to the appropriate track is known as your seek time to bring the appropriate sector below the read write head is known as your latency rotational latency and the total access time is known as this seek time plus latency that means, we are going to access the starting point of that particular file or particular address. So, this is the basically access time seek time after that after placing the appropriate track and sector below this particular head then what will happen now we have to transfer it then this digs will rotate in an angular velocity constant angular velocity. So, it will take some time to cover from the starting position of this sector to the ending position of this sector. So, during that time I am going to transfer the information in this particular way. So, this time is known as my transfer time and this transfer time depends on the rotational speed of the disk. So, if rotate in a particular speed because it will take a particular amount of time to traverse this particular distance complete sector. So, this is the time required to transfer the whole information or whole block that means, if in a block if I am storing 512 byte then we can transfer it and which depends on the angular velocity of the disk. So, this is the transfer rate we are going to say and this is the rate at which we are transferring the information which depends on the angular velocity of the disk. So, finally, this is the timing diagram just we are saying sir this is a wait for device basically say and it is looking for the device then wait for channel basically now what will happen that basically you can think about that I am going to get the system bus. So, in case of DMA controller then what will happen DMA controller will get hold of the system bus from the processor. So, this is basically waiting for 
getting this particular channel to transport. Then first point will come some time is required for seek time to place the head in appropriate track. Then some of the time will needed to bring the appropriate sector below the head. So, this is basically seek time and rotational delay is known as my access time. I am going to access my sector then depending on the rotational delay this angular velocity it will take some time to transfer the entire block. So, this is the time required to transfer the information and this is the portion I can say that device is busy during transfer first getting hold of the channel then um, place uh, appropriate position seek time and rotational delay then transfer it. So, this is the time required to transfer the information and we say this is the device busy period. Now, what is the timing of I O transfer? So, it depends on angular velocity. So, it says that the total average access time is T A. So, what is the T A basically? T A is nothing but T S plus 1 upon 2 R plus B upon B by R n. So, this is a dx, okay. it is rotating in constant angular velocity. Now, what are those parameters? T s is saying that average seek time. So, what we are saying average seek time? Basically, it will sometimes you have to move from outer track to the inner track or sometimes you have to simply move one track on this. It is my head is here, but I have to go to this. Thing. So, just I am taking an average it. So, this is average seek time is your T s. Average rotational delay is 1 by T r. What is r over here? This is the rotational speed in revolution per second. So, if I am having say r revolution per second to make one revolution it will take 1 by r second. So, this is 1 by r is going to give me the revolution for one cycle. So, now when I am going to bring the appropriate sector below the head then what will happen sometimes it have to rotate from this point to this one. So, in that particular say in some time it is in the appropriate sector or in some times it is the very far sector. So, we have to rotate everything and bring it to here that means, rotation of the entire disk. So, that is why you are taking it is a average. So, if it is from 1 to 1 by r, so it is 1 by 2 r the average one. So, this is the transfer rate if I am going to number of byte to be transfer is b. So, in case of a number of bytes on a track is n. So, it is b by r n is going to give me this particular transfer rate transfer time. Okay. So, basically in r 1 by r is time required to rotate one particular these things. Now, the number of bytes in a track is your n. So, total in one revolution I can access those entire information n, but in one track sector I am having say b bytes per sector. So, we need we want to transfer only this b byte. So, this is the transfer time b upon r by n. So, it depends on the rotational speed of this particular disk. Secondly, the number of information that we are storing in a particular sector. Okay. So, this is the I O transfer rate. Now, for that we need when we are going to work with these things, we need a hard disk controller also. So, what is that hard disk controller does basically? It is going to handle the mechanical movement. So, we have to rotate the disk, we have to move the read write head to do all those things. We have to initiate it, we have to give the signal from the processor and we are going to do all those mechanical information. Then convert one form to the other form. Now, you just see that in hard disk what we are doing? We are storing information in magnetic form. So, when I am going to store it, I am giving electrical signals. So, zeros and 1 will be either stored as a 0 volt and some high volt. So, this electrical signal will be converted to magnetic property and going to magnetize this particular disk. So, this is your writing. In case of read that magnetic property will be converted to the electrical one that electrical signal will be transferred to this thing. So, we have need to convert this information also from one form to the other form. So, from say magnetic signal to electrical signal or from electrical signal to magnetic signal. Then data buffer now what I am saying that I am going to transfer block wise and what is a block this is nothing but the information in a particular sector. So, we are going to first collect that information and we are going to transfer it. So, we should have some data buffering capacities also in this hard disk controller and along with that after that it should have this uh, data transfer mechanism. We are going to transfer it from this particular data buffer to the time. So, this is the hard disk controller 
and to work with this particular hard disk we need a program okay so through that particular program we are going to control this particular hard disk controller so that means we need a device driver so because for every device we need a device driver which is nothing but a software program so we are going to have a device driver to control this particular hard disk controller so device driver is nothing but a software routine and we are going to control this particular controller with the help of this device driver so we are having a disk device driver which is going to control the controller of the hard disk and appropriately transfer the information from disk to processor or processor to disk so these are the things that we require when we are going to work with an input output devices and in this particular case we are just discussing about the hard disk which will be used for input devices as well as output devices so for input devices we are going to read file and going to process the information that process data again we have to store it we are going to store it in another file so this hard disk will be used as an input as well as output device and these are the things required to work with hard disk so we are having a hard disk controller which is built in the hard disk itself so it is going to have going to control the mechanical movement and we are going to control this particular hard disk with a software routine which is known as your device driver or disk device driver so now that is all about the working principle of hard disk and just we are discussing in a nutshell how it works and how we are going to store information and how we are going to organize the information now just look for some questions over here so first question i am saying that what is external memory and why it is required how external memory is generally implemented so this is basically a test item to meet the objective one already i mentioned that that main memory is volatile in nature to permanent storage we need this particular external memory and how they are generally implemented the depends specific to the devices some are of magnetic in nature some are optical in nature so you know that magnetic disks or cd etc now question 2 explain the basic working principle of a hard disk so if you are talking about hard disk basically i am mentioning about the magnetic so this is the design principle i am asking so working principle already we have discussed about the design issues of hard disks so i think you will be able to explain these things also so we are meeting this objective two now question number 3 how is data organized and accessed in a magnetic disk i think we have explained it it is a sector track and surface explain how is the performance of a magnetic disk measured so this depends on the data transport how to measure the capacity of a hard disk so you can use a sheet how we are going to measure the capacity of a hard disk we know the number of track number of sector number of surface and the block size depending on these things we can calculate the capacity of the hard disk now performance of a magnetic disk is measured it is basically related to the time required to the transfer the information now i think when we discuss about the addressing format i have mentioned something that we are having two format now again i said that effect of performance now either we can use this particular format or in this particular format whether does changing the format addressing format whether it is going to have some effect of performance you just see when i am talking about sector number surface number and track number in that particular case what will happen i am reading complete information of a track then after completion of this particular track we are sending the surface number that means from surface one we are going to the surface two so when we are going from surface one to surface two you just see this is a switching on the i am sending the head now these things read write head number from this particular read write head to this particular read write head so this is only a circuit switching we are having a circuit to just make it off and make it on so it will hardly take any time so once you complete all the surfaces of that position that means we are reading the complete cylinder once we read the complete cylinder then we are going to sense the track number so we are moving the read write head so this is a mechanical movement it will take time so this is the way we are organizing our data and we are transferring it now second format you just see first sector numbers i am completing all the sector of a track 
then after that what will happen I am changing the track number when I change the track number from this track I am going to the next track then there is a movement mechanical movement. So, for every track we are moving it. So, it is having a mechanical movement. So, changing of track is going to take slight time. Okay. So, you just see that I am changing after completion of all the track now I am changing the surface now which is nothing but an electrical switching only. So, here you just see that I am having more number of movement of the head. So, it will take more time. So, this particular format is going to take slightly more time when we are going to access the data from the disk. So, performance is less over here because access time is more now after completing every track there is a mechanical movement, but in this particular fast format we are avoiding this particular mechanical movement movement of the head after completion of one cylinder we are changing this particular head. So, you can now understand we are reducing the number of mechanical movement over here. So, that is why this is going to give me a slightly better performance. So, this is the things that what we are having about question 4 explain how the performance of a magnetic disk measured. Okay. So, this is basically you have to find out those particular component seek time rotational delay and transfer rate. Transfer rate depends on the rotational speed of our. Okay. Now, with this I am coming to the end of this particular module input output subsystem. So, we have discussed about the input output subsystem, we have seen that there are three ways of transferring information programmed I O, interpretive and I O and DMA. Along with that we have just discussed about one particular storage device, how we are going to store information and how it is become permanent and what is the organization of this particular hard disk. So, once you understand the organization of the hard disk, I think if you slightly go through the text book you will understand how we are storing information in our optical disk or CD, because here storing mechanism is optical, but other addressing and other format will almost remain same, because you have to identify the start of a sector. So, to discuss this particular input output subsystem, we have divided the modules into four units. So, these four units are basically like that, first unit is input output primitives. Unit 2 is interrupt driven I O, unit 3 is DMA transfer and unit 4 is your storage devices. So, this module we have addressed with the help of this particular 4 unit and every unit I am giving some test item and question to see what are the concept that we have learned in that particular unit. Now, after combining those particular unit or if you look the objective of all the units, I think we have achieved the objective that we have cited at the very beginning for this particular module input output subsystem. So, again I am just citing it what are our module objective that we have cited. So, objective 1 we said that illustrate the need of I O module to connect peripheral devices to the processor. It is in the application level I think now you have idea why we need that I O module, why we are directly not connecting all the devices. Objective 2 state the generic structure and function of the I O module just in knowledge level we have discussed it that what are the components that we have and how it is going to interface the processor with the I O devices and how transfer takes place. Objective 3 specify the instruction to be included in the instruction set of the processor to perform the I O operation. So, we need some I O instruction already I have discussed it we are having two ways of mapping it memory mapped I O and isolated I O. So, for that we need instruction and we have said in which cases we need separate instruction in which cases we can use the same sort of memory read and memory write operation. Objective 4 show the addressing scheme to identify the I O devices we have explained it I think in unit 1 itself because after the giving the addressing scheme then we have discussed about the programmed I O techniques. Objective 5 define the defined mode of I O transfer like programmed I O interrupt driven and DMA. So, in comprehension level we have discussed those things. Objective 6 explain the transferring of information character by character and bulk data transfer. So, this is in the analysis level we have seen if it is basically DMA when we are going to use DMA when we are going to look for the bulk data transfer, but for character by character it may be your programmed I O and interrupt different I O. Objective 7 explain the design issues of I O modules 
for different modes namely programmed I.O., interrupt driven and BMA. So, it is in the design level and I think we have explained about the design issues and I have mentioned that since we have discussed about the design of the control unit of the processor which is a more complex one. So, by knowing those particular design issues of the control unit of our processor, this is a very simple one you can follow the same similar approach and you can design those particular control unit also. Objective edge specify the need of device controller for a specific device. I think we have mentioned about the device controller for your hard disk like that for every devices we need a device controller and this device controller will be controlled by a device service token. So, whatever objective we have cited at the very beginning of this particular module I think we have made this particular objective after going through the units of this particular module. Now, just see we are having some module level problems let us see now to solve this particular problem we need the knowledge of the entire module that means we need the knowledge of those particular four units. I think very simple question I am putting over here so that you can visualize it. So, question 1 what I am saying in the I O module we have a data register and a control register. What is the use of control register in I O module? Indicate the use of control register in case of data transfer by the methods programmed I O, interrupt driven I O and DMA. So, if you can able to solve these things and to solve these things we have met the objective 1, 3, 5, 6 and 7. So, these are the objective already I have cited over here. So, you can solve this particular problem basically we are meeting the objective those particular objective. So, similarly question 2 I am saying that indicate the ways to provide the address of a I O device to handle multiple I O requests how to keep the information of the pending I O request. So, already we have discussed it how to handle multiple I interrupts or multiple I O devices sometimes we have to assign priorities. So, we have to maintain everything. So, for that we have to design the appropriate controllers. So, if you can able to do these things then we are meeting the objective 4, 5, 6 and 7. Question 3 write the design issues of device controller like the hard disk controller. Now, we have discussed about it I think this is a simple question I am giving just see what are the design issues that we have. Basically, when we are going to design the controller for hard disk at least you should have mechanism to move the read write head, you should have mechanism or you should have a motor to rotate the platters and all those things need to be controlled appropriately by a control logic. So, this is the issues that we are having and if you can do this thing that means you are meeting the objective bit. So, with that we are coming to the end of this particular module input output subsystem and if you now go to the study material that already we have mentioned in the module learning strategy. I think you will be able to understand and I think you will be able to grasp the need of input output subsystem and what are the functionalities of those input output subsystem. So, with this I want a fair today. Thank you very much.